Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. This is episode number seven of the Diverse Places revision series over here on my channel. Today we're going to be investigating people's perceptions. So if that's what you're here for, great, stick around. Please do subscribe down below. I upload one of these every Monday at 4.30pm. So yeah, stick around till the end. Um, if you think you know anyone who may find this useful, uh, please do share it with them. It's what, it's what it's here for. I'm here to try and help people. Um, if you also have any questions, please leave them in the description box down below and I'll try and answer them. But yeah, without further ado, let's just get straight on into this video. Collecting data about people's perception of place. People's perception of places are about personal opinions. That presents a problem. How can we accurately measure people's attitudes, which are subjective and not objective based on fact? One method involves studying house prices. This is a blunt instrument because house prices vary from small flats to country mansions. But basically a house, like anything, is worth, is worth what someone is willing to pay for it. However, the price paid reflects the desire of someone to live in a particular house in a particular area. So house prices in that area are a fairly accurate reflection of people's perceptions of that area. To understand this further, it helps to analyse factors that influence house prices, such as crime statistics. Data from the National Crime Database shows how far crime statistics correlate with house prices. The database uses police neighbourhoods within particular geographical areas and, zoom in, and zooms in to crimes recorded on, in specific streets or houses on certain dates. When examining such statistics, it's important to take account of population size. Salford, for example, has one of the largest crime reported totals, but it also has a much larger population than other areas referred to. Therefore, it's important to calculate crime rate per thousand people. To do this, we divide the total crimes by population and multiply it by a thousand. This changes the result for Salford significantly. From, from a place that on the surface has many crimes, it actually emerges as an area of Greater Manchester with one of the lowest crime rates. Amongst the categories of crime is antisocial behaviour, which counts for 30% of, of all KUK reported crime, the largest category in most places, even in rural areas. Given that antisocial behaviour is a nuisance for those on the receiving end, a working hypothesis may be that house prices are related to the number of ASB incidents. The relationship between the two can be explored using two techniques, a scattergraph and a Spearman's rank. Investigating how people feel about their local area. Several geographers and polling companies have investigated what affects people's attitudes about where they live. IPSOSMORI. It publishes opinion polls and at election time, but it carries out commission surveys about aspects of human behaviour the results of which it then sells to organisations. The sample sizes used are enormous, so the results are significant. The IPOS Maury's findings are useful. Its 2009 report, People, Perceptions and Place, contains data about crime and how it affects people's feelings about that area. However, it's important to understand that how the data was collected. The, the satisfaction data are percentages of how well people thought that seven ASB indicators were being handled. Each indicator has a three point score. The total was out of 21. Scoring the higher the score, the higher the satisfaction with, it, with its handling. Scoring 14 out of 21, therefore will be 66.7%. The results are not surprising. It's a negative relationship with the greater satisfaction in those areas with the lowest instance of ASB. Collecting primary data and attitudes about perceptions. It's worth carrying out your own versions of these studies a process known as replicating. Surveys which replicate others are useful. The methods have already been established and your own findings can be compared with, your, with national patterns. The satisfaction with life survey is, is to find out how people feel about the area in which they live. By collecting data from a large sample, it's possible to identify drivers, key factors that drive whether or not people like the area in which they live. Studying the questions, it shows that one to six people 
one to six deal with people. Studying the questions in this survey show that one to six deal with people, housing and a sense of neighbourliness. Seven to 10 deal with safety. 11 to 14 deal with an aspect of environmental quality and 15 to 20 are about local council, police and transport. By collating the results from a large sample, it's then possible to add up the scores, express them as percentages and then analyse which factors and drivers produce the highest scores. The result will either be a list of factors that work either towards, com towards strong communities such as positive drivers or against them. Environmental quality surveys. Sometimes it's possible to identify factors about the environment that might contribute to people's enjoyment or lack of satisfaction with an area. In this case, an environmental quality survey can be used to measure people's feelings about the environment. It's a bipolar survey, a survey which uses terms at extremes, at, op at opposite extremes, with which, within which to place people's opinions. It consists of indicators that record people's feelings. These can then be used to score either individually, such as what people think of building, design or maintenance, or as a whole by adding up the total score. These results can then be plotted geographically to identify how the satisfaction of an area of an environment varies. Creating images of place. Media, music, photography, film, art and literature can expand the view given by statistics about representations of place. These include music, such as the specials Ghost Town, a negative view of the condition of Britain's inner cities in 1981. Photography. This picture of Hackney Wick an image that could give a very negative view of Hackney. Film, such as East is East, a portrayal of a multicultural community in Salford, which presents some of the challenges facing such communities. Arts, for example, painting by Ellis Lowry of Industrial Manchester, which can, which can present either a romantic view of Manchester or alternatively, a very depressed view of a small matchstick people dwarfed against industrial buildings and cities. Literature, such as Ian McEwan's novel Saturday about one day in London in 2005. And that is the end of this episode. This is the end of episode seven. I hope you learned something. I hope you can take something away from it. Next week, we're looking at increasing diversity within the UK. So I hope that's something that interests, that interests you. Subscribe down below so you don't miss it. And I will see you same time, same place next week, Monday, 4.30pm. Bye guys.